Daniel, INDIVO is a patient health record, and that's a term that's gotten some, some publicity now because Google and Microsoft have their patient health records, health vault, and so forth, but I understand that INDIVO came first. It sure did, actually. The idea for INDIVO um, came, I guess, back in 1994. It originally sprang out of a project called uh, the, the Guardian Angel Project, which was a collaboration between us at the Children's Hospital and some folks at MIT. Um, and it was based on a, a couple of, of basic realizations. Um, the first being that over the course of a patient's life, they're going to get their data from many different institutions. Um, they're going to, to come in co into contact with lots of different uh, sites of care, maybe medical devices, et cetera, and that's going to give a variety of medical data. And secondly, that the institutions that collect and store that data are, are very unwilling to share that data, um, both with patients and with other institutions. And I think that's, that's still very much true today, even with uh, the recent fads of, of health information exchanges. Uh, still not great leaps have been made towards that direction. So there's a, a very clear need for a system that enables patients themselves to take control of the medical data that they've accumulated over their journey through these multiple institutions. And, and Indivo is, is very much trying to fill that gap. And why did you release it as open source? Uh, so there are a couple of reasons. Uh, first, obviously, it's more attractive to institutions if it's free, but we all know that's not the main point of open source. It allows us to do a, a couple of other things. First, um, it allows us to engage the community. Um, groups of, of tech-savvy people who are interested in health uh, can help us to develop Indivo itself and can help us develop functional, meaningful applications based on patient data uh, as third party. Um, additionally, one of the nice things about Indivo being open source is that it allows for a very customizable experience for every institution that adopts it because they get the entire source code. Um, in fact, a great example of this, uh, we, we were deployed at Children's Hospital Boston, uh, obviously where I'm from, um, and they, for their deployment, wrote a completely different UI. So the user experience is totally different um, when, when they use that system there. And that's one of the, the nice things about Indivo, that you can do that. So how do the staff at Children's Hospital present this to patients? How do they say, we want you to use this? So, they have uh, what they call the, the My Children's Portal, uh, which is a, a window through which patients can log into the system. It's, it's actually a, a, a network of systems. And one component of that, um, they have the option to, to view their data. So there's uh, access to labs that they've had recently, uh, medications that they're currently taking. And, and users can bring that up through the interface and look through it and uh, make annotations to documents if they'd like to, you know. I got this allergy because of this, or this medication is causing me headaches, et cetera. So it's, it's kind of a nice way for patients to get involved in their care. Are there any interesting anecdotes you can tell about patients who have benefited by using this? I'm thinking, so there's, there's, certainly, there's certainly been a lot of, uh, of, of patient interest in the system. We've, we've done a, a bit of a, a few papers have been published regarding the efforts there. Um, patients definitely. Uh, have benefited. I know uh, there have been a couple of cases where, where patients have, have made annotations about allergies uh, that have provided information to their doctors that they, the doctors didn't know and that helped them uh, diagnose uh, and prescribe the, the appropriate medications because of it.